I know that I've spoken out in the past, as have many, about, against the New York Times, against its biases and its editorial decisions. But tonight, I have to speak out and say that this week, the Times got it right. And in the process, it did something extraordinary, reminding us of an important truth. And the way the New York Times got it right was on Sunday, where for the very first time in 40 years, the New York Times printed a front page without a single picture or graphic. Instead, under the headline of U.S. deaths near 100,000, an incalculable loss, it printed names, just names, and a brief line or two about those who died from COVID-19. One name after the next. First on the front page, and then on three subsequent pages, totaling 1,000 names of COVID-19 victims, which wrote the Times, reflect just 1% of the toll. None were numbers. This paper was one of the most moving and touching tributes to COVID-19 a tribute not to 100,000 people, but to one person, and then another, and then another, 100,000 times over. And what the Times did was remind us that this horrific pandemic is not merely an event in history where many, many people died, more than the collective casualties of the Vietnam War, the Gulf War, the Afghanistan War, the Iraqi War, and 9-11, but that one person died, and then another, and then another, and another, ad kentum milia, up to the mind-numbing number of 100,000. Every one of them had a story. Every one had a life and a dream, a place on this earth and a purpose to fulfill. Every one was someone, and not just a statistic. And that's what we need to remember. Not only as we prepare to recite Yisker, but also as we prepare to celebrate the great revelation at Sinai, the soaring, majestic moment when all of the Jewish people, an assembly that we often describe as 600,000 strong, were united as one, ke'ishachad, b'levachad. And yet despite our focus on that accord, that achdut of those 600,000 at Sinai, we need to realize that they too were much more than a number. As the Ramban reminded us in last week's parasha, when describing the census which led to that unforgettable number, a census that Moshe and Aaron were charged to complete. Taught the Ramban, there were two reasons the Jews needed to be counted. The first, was to emphasize the kindness of God, who transformed the family into a nation, who took 70 souls and multiplied them more than 400 fold. And the second was to guarantee that each Jew would have to pass before Moshe and Aaron, would have to be recognized and known by name which is what God meant when he told them to count the Jews by number and by name, because Moshe and Aharon were destined to be much more 
than mere messengers of God, more than redeemers and more than leaders. They were to be, taught Rav Salavechik Zetzal, the mentors of a nation, the men charged with transmitting the Mesorah from Sinai forward. And the only way that they could do so was to know the people. They needed a relationship with them, to teach them, to guide them, and most importantly, to understand them. Because our heritage, our Mesorah, is not passed forward through mass assemblies and grand gatherings, but rather it's passed forward one person at a time, which is why each of us has a role to play, a responsibility to receive the traditions from those who preceded us, shape it, and then pass them forward to those who will succeed us. It's one person and then another, and then another, stretching back to Sinai and all the way forward through Jewish history. And that's what we celebrate on Shavuot. Not just what happened 3,300 years ago, but what happened this year, and what happens now, and what will happen next year. We celebrate a Mesorum that courses through our parents and our teachers to each of us. And from each of us, courses forward to our children and to all those who learn from us. And because we have that role to play, we have the opportunity, maybe even the responsibility, to place our own imprint on that Mesorah, to create memories and traditions that will strengthen it, to add a piece of ourselves into the lifeblood of our people the Torah we celebrate. And so for me, the Mesorah I received was not only from my teachers in school and in yeshiva, but from my grandmother, Zal, who showed me how to salt meat more than a decade before I learned about it in Yoridea, like snow on the rooftops on all six sides, she would say. And there was the Mesorah of my grandfather, Zal, who taught me how to daven and how to give tzedakah, giving me a nickel to put in the pushkin whenever I would go with him to shul during the week. And for me, the Mesorah I received was from my father, Zal, who never learned in yeshiva, and yet taught me the importance of ki'ishachad, belevachad, of unity, despite our differences, and of the obligation to bring people together despite occasional frustrations and even disappointments. And for me, the Mesorah I received even took a strange detour when my son Yaakov Zal taught me of the importance of simcha and the friendships as he collected friends and admirers as easily as some collect baseball cards, following in the path of Shammai, who taught emor ma'at v'aseh harben, v'evi mekabel et kol adam v'sever panim yafot, that actions speak louder than words, and that we must always accept others with friendship and with warmth. And of course, yibodo l'chaim, I continue to receive the Mesorah from my mother, who's hundred and svansik, a Mesorah of strength, determination, family and tradition. She is the glue who holds us together, but she is also the inspiration. We have to reach back as far as possible. Remember the stories of those who are no longer and celebrate the joys of those who are here. All of which means that we're still standing at Sinai, receiving God's words and passing them forward through our actions, our traditions, and our teachings, and which may be another way of understanding what Chazal taught when they said that all of the neshamot, all of the Jews, their souls, past, present, and future, 
were at Sinai. They were there, and we'll, we are still there, charged with passing the word of God forward, remembering and living the lessons of each individual who passed the Messorah to us. It's not the 600,000, but the one person, and then another, and then another, stretching back to Sinai and all the way forward through Jewish history. These past three months have been an unimaginable test as we have faced tragedy and isolation that has forced us to do things we never thought we would or that we could. And yet, it has also forced us to turn inward, to rethink what is important and what we were meant to do. We've suffered losses and we've been afraid, but we've also conducted a kind of internal life review, which has led us to understand how important connections are. Connections to one another, connections to our communities, connections to our schools, connections to our shuls, and connections that move our Messora forward. Tonight, as we're about to say Yisker, let us treasure all of those connections. Remember those that were and honor their lives by passing their traditions, their lessons forward, one person at a time. And let us also remember the 100,000 who lost their lives in these recent months and be grateful for those who risked their lives for others, the medical personnel and all of the first responders. May their lives continue through ours. May their memories be for a blessing and may their names continue to be remembered one person at a time, one person, and then the next, and then the next, for all of the gifts they passed on to each of us. And now, as is our custom at KINS, I call upon Jeremy Amster to recite the Kelmale, to remember those who were murdered in the Shoah and those who gave their lives defending our sacred land. Jeremy. El Mali Rahamim Shokhaim Bamramim Hamitsaim Nukhani Khana Al Kanfei Ashikhina Vimalas Kidao Shimut Hahrim Kizawa Haraki Yamasini as Nishmas Hakidoshim Hatahorim Shehomaso Vishanergo Vishanish Hatu Vishanisrafu Vishanidbo Vishanechniko Akidushashem Babu Shanu Mispalim Yaras Karas Nishmo Sahia Vigane Tehem Rukhasam Lochain Bal Harachamim Yastirem Bestay Sikhin of all the old me Bitra Bitra Kaimas Nishmo Sahia Adonai Nakalasam Vianuko Vishalam Amishkiva Sayam Vinomad Amei 
Amen. El Moli Rachamim, Shochem Bamaromim, Hamasayim in the Khanechona, Akanfe Yashachina, Bimalas Kidoshim to Harim Vigiborim. Kizawara ki ha mazidi the Nishmas Hakidoshi Shenil Hamu the Homar Hos Israel Bamachtere Sumitsagonal Israel. Vishenov lo bimil hamata, who must run a show. How could you shas a shame? How am I behores? Babo shanum is balim yaras karas nishros sahiem. Lochain bal harachami. Yes, to rain the sea, sick and a folly, oh, la me. We throw a bistro, ha, ha, ye must niche most say. I don't know, Nakalasa, began a day to we are Nuko, Vishala, Mishkeva, say, the Sama, the Koyiso, as if who saw the Amdu, the Garalam, the Kaita, Yamin, Vinomad, Amen. At this time, the custom that we have is we recite the Hashem Adam. And I will say it, and please join with me. It should be on your screens and also in your Yiskir booklets. Adonai ma'adam v'teda'eu ben anosh bat chashveu. Adam lahevel dama yamav kitzel over. Baboker yatzitz v'chalaf la'erev yimolel v'yavesh. Limnot yamenu ken hoda v'navi levav chokma. Shemor to tam ura e yashar ki acharit le ish shalom ach Elohim yifdel nafshi miyad shaol ki kacheni sela kalash eriu levavi sur levavi vechelki Elohim liolam v'yashov ve'afar ala aretz kishahaya v'haruach tashuv el ha Elohim asher netana now. Please, we will recite the Yisker. We'll give you, if everyone, a few moments to be able to recite the service. <laughs> 